a lot of different form lines coming into this race. We have a lot of riders coming off the Tour de France, going into some recovery. We have riders coming off altitude camp and heavy training camps before the Vuelta. Some riders will react differently. They need a few races to get into it. Some riders can carry their form well. It it looks like Avon Apol can come off training camp like Norway was the same and just be absolutely flying. The question is, Benji, can Avon Apol carry this form through the Vuelta? What does a one-day performance like this even mean for La Vuelta? Before we get to that, I'll mention our show partners with the online cycling platform that makes training fun, whether you're a World Tour pro like Mark Cavendish or Ashley Moorman or just starting out on your cycling journey. Not only can you train and race across nine worlds, including a France world, you can hop on social rides and so make sure you signed up to the LRP Zwift Club via the link down below to stay in the loop when I or Benji are riding during the Tour de France Fam Avec Zwift. If you're not on Zwift yet, you can head to Zwift.com for a free seven-day trial. What does a one-day performance like this even mean for La Vuelta? I think that's a very good question that I don't think many people have an answer on yet. We know that he's done one Grand Tour in his career at MQ Evenepoel. That was a Giro d'Italia that he just came back from the heavy injury in his career from. So to use that as the example or the stamp that defines all his Grand Tours from that point onwards is just unfair to the riders. So I don't think that Giro means that he can't do three weeks at any Grand Tour in the future. I think that Giro is... On paper, just a rider that is not well prepared for that Giro was put in a Giro where he was rushed towards and eventually he paid the price for it in the third week and even in the second week already. Now, when it comes to this year's Velta, his preparation has not really been changed despite opportunities for the change arising. For example, in the Tour de France, we had multiple riders that were out. Alaphilippe was out for a quick step in the Giro. Ilan van Wilder was out with his jaw broken or something because of LBL, if my mind serves me right. There were opportunities for Nemco to hop into a different Grand Tour and ride that instead of being rushed to another Grand Tour. But quick step decided otherwise. Quick step decided to leave and stay with the same plan that they initially planned out initially at the start of the year. And I think that's a very good decision. We saw ups and downs in the year when it comes to Remco. We saw LBL being great, for example. We saw Carpena being pretty awful for what we expected from him. Swiss, he had a bad day, for example. Like Swiss was weird. Basque was good, in my opinion. Basque was good. Basque was good. Swiss, yeah, he won the TT. I think Thomas could have beaten him, but like... Yeah, he got destroyed on the climbs and he can't have been in... It was just weird. Uh, but that whole Tour de Suisse is just weird. Riddle COVID heat wave, <laughs> it's really tough to assess. But yeah. you're right, Carpena is the one that's you're like, ooh, dropped on the first climb and then did the second one quicker. That's strange. As yes. a reminder to everybody for the Vuelta, the Vuelta is the Tour de France this year. The Vuelta <laughs> has a lot of time trial kilometers. It has a TTT and it has a lot of... 6 to 7% or even 5 to 7% mountain top finishes. There are not too many Rampas in Humanas mountain top finishes. There's one which is like 3Ks maybe, so the differences could be 30 seconds, not huge. It's actually a very Remco Avenipol favorable course, uh, in my opinion. The Sierra Nevada finish, yes, that is hard and that is long, but it, they're not doing it to like the moon, which they were trying to do. I think it's like a little <laughs> bit lower now, like 25, yep. 2700 meters. So, yeah, he could crack on that climb and just lose. And that's the problem. That's what we need to see, Benji. Because it's not like um it's not like Jack Haig, for example, who is like, okay, Primoz Roberts in great shape. Can and will dr- usually drop Jack Haig on home on a Terry Covadonga. And yes. we can roughly calculate he should put 30 to 60 seconds into Haig. And it, that's what will happen. Same in Torini. Torini Paranese, I hate. Even if it was the other end of the spectrum, it's like, Will he win the stage <laughs> doing his tour of Norway Watts? Or will he drop on the second climb of the day, like in Carpena, and lose 10 minutes? Like, that's what we need to see. And it's impossible to know for sure. I would say his whole season's been really, I think, preparing for this Vuelta. He's been, gone and done heat adaptation. I believe he's been training in Alicante, not entirely sure, or down in south or south uh, east of Spain. I, I don't expect him to have the same Carpena problems, but you never know. Like Quick Step and not Ineos or Yumbo in terms of like fueling and, and that sort of thing for a GC guy. They don't have as much experience in it. But yeah, 
what do you expect from Ivan Paul at the La Vuelta? That's a very good question. I think uh, for that, we kind of need to look at the parkour. Like you mentioned, we've got those bigger climbing stages like the Sierra Nevada. Indeed, it's not up to the moon. It's not up to the moon because I think the biodiversity would be impacted if the riders would go there once uh, every 20 years or something. I don't know. That was the reason that I read at least. But when it comes to the other stages, there's a lot of like hilly parkours where I'm like, okay, this is the kind of stage where Remco would go early. But can he do that in a Grand Tour? That's a very different factor than, for example, in a one-day race. There's also some... There's not that many rampas in Humanas in there, but there's some finishes in there that are perhaps a bit steeper. And I don't know. It's just... The time trials are the ones where I'm like, okay, he should do very well here. When it comes to the team time trial, I'm also pretty certain that I see a decent time come out of the team of Quickstep in that time trial. I... um. When it, let's give like an actual prediction. Like, I think yeah, that Remco Evenepoel, <laughs> I think that Remco Evenepoel is going to win two or three. I'll say two stages. I don't want to. No, but GC, I don't care about stages. Stages yeah, of uh, it, that's it that's matters. quick step twenty nineteen. No, it does. Two stages, and he's gonna get seven in GC. Okay, he's gonna win the he's gonna win the Vuelta pretty easily, I think. Um, Pagach is not doing it. Hindley's it's not in cool conditions. Roglic, we don't know about his status. He seems to be recovering. So yeah, I think Evan Paul should win the Vuelta. Um, he's obviously against Sivakov, Carapaz, Rodriguez. I think Mass has had issues. The, the start list is a battered start list. That it, the Vuelta start list in March always looks really, really good, and then we yeah. get to August and we're like, oh. Pagatch is out, Roglic <laughs> injured. So, yeah, I think he wins. Um, wins the he really suits him. Yeah, yeah, he should win. Okay, okay. Who's going <laughs> to... No one's going to beat him. Well, uh, where was Primoz and, and Pogacar at Tour de Suisse? Then again, yeah, it's Tour de Suisse. Where were they at Basque Country? Well, there were some riders of that, but... True, true. Is Martinez going? I'm kind of concerned. He looks like he's getting a little bit better. He might be going. Jagen Hart, I think, will also do well. Uh, Mate, Luke Blap, gonna... where was your take? Luke Blap was a better GC rider than Remco Evenepoel. Is that not the case anymore? Is he doing the Vuelta? Yeah, and Carlos Rodriguez as well, even though oh, today he oh, okay. that In that good. case, yes, Evenepoel second, Plap first. But <laughs> if Plap doesn't do it, then yes, Evenepoel will win. Um, but, yeah. but yeah, I just the, the start list, I don't know. He's been peaking for it when others haven't, and it, the start and the parkour is pretty favourable to him. My only concern, well, not my only, but my main concern is uh, the quick step team. Alaphilippe being there is really good. Alaphilippe's a really good domestique and committed. The Vikers look good. Favenines, Masnada, Van Wilder. Yeah. It, it's not a bad team. I just worry. I just worry about quick step riding for GC. I worry that. Alaphilippe might have certain stages where he eyes himself and therefore might not be riding for Remco on those stages. And like we saw, for example, was it I think it they work well Basque? together. Basque Remco rode for him. You are right. He let him out. I That's an example, for example. I don't know. Okay. All right. That's our predictions. Benji's got Remco for, what was it, two stage wins and seventh on GC. Yeah. I have him for... Uh, I don't care about stage wins, winning GC. How many stages, uh, though? Come on. Oh, at least one. At oh, least one. That's fucking um, boring. <laughs> well, TT, <laughs> probably. Anyway, I picked him to win GC. Seventh. You think, what do you think? Matteo Fabra is going to beat him in GC. <laughs> like, on, I don't know about that. Ethan Hader. Anyway, that's Ronco Evenfall looking good at San Sebastian. What does it mean for stage racing? Who knows? 